Hey y'all, today we're gonna to work on a little bit of extra factoring practice. This should be a review of all of the different type of factoring we've covered thus far. Looking at number one, I can tell this is gonna be a greatest common factoring factoring problem. So what I wanna look at is what is the greatest common factor between both terms, a to the fourth b squared and negative five a squared b to the fifth. I don't have any common numbers like negative five between them. So I can't pull a number out, but I can pull an a out. Now actually, I can pull two a's, so a squared out of both terms, and I can pull a b out. Notice that there's b squared in the first term and b to the fifth in the second term, so the most I can pull out of both is b squared. Now in order to multiply, to get a to the fourth b squared times a squared b squared, I have to have a squared minus, and I'm gonna need a five here, so I end up with that five coefficient in front, and that's just gonna be b cubed, because I already pulled a squared out. When I multiply back through, that'll end up being in there. All right, so that's number one. Looking at number two, now this one actually can't be factored anymore. And the reason I know that is because we're missing that b term, the one in the middle. When we have the sum of perfect squares, you can't factor it anymore. Now in number three, we have the difference of perfect squares. This one we can factor. Remember we need an x times an x to get x squared. And then we're gonna minus and add the square root of 100, which is 10. And that's our answer. Okay, so let's look at number four, five, and six. Number four is a sum of different, oh, sorry, a sum of cubes. So let's visualize our cubes here. We've got x cubed plus, and this one is the cube root of six, 216 is six. So our a term here is x and our b term is six. Let's try to memorize that formula without having to look back at it on our notes. I know that it's a plus b, so it's x plus six, and then it's gonna be x squared, and then I multiply them, minus 6x, and then plus 36, which is 6 squared. And that is our factored term, unless we were able to factor x squared minus 6x plus 36. And I don't think we can because I don't think there's any products of 36 that add to negative 6. So here we'd have 12 and 3, 6 and 6. 9 and 4, yeah, we're good. So it can't be factored anymore. All right, let's look at number 5. Number 5, I'm checking first for any greatest common factors. There are none. Since I see that my a value is greater than 1, I'm going to go ahead and group. So I'm going to take 2 times 2, which is going to give me 4. And obviously, I'm looking for products of 4 that are going to add to my b term. So to get that to be 5, it has to be 4 and 1. I'm going to rewrite this as plus 4x plus 1x plus 2. I'm going to group first two terms, second two terms. I'm going to factor the greatest common factor out of both terms, or for, sorry, both groups. So it's going to give me 2x and then x plus 2. And then here I can just factor out a 1, so I'm going to be left with x plus 2. Now my two terms here, here's term 1, here's term 2. Both terms have x plus 2 in common, so I can factor that out. And then what I'm left with is 2x plus 1. And that's our answer. All right, now looking at number 6, we have four terms. Whenever we factor a quartic nomial, we have to group. So look at the first two terms. What do they have in common? Well, I can pull a 4 out of both, and I can pull x squared out of both. That's going to leave me with x minus 6. Now, negative 9x plus 54, I can pull a negative 9 out, which is going to leave me with x minus 6 again. Now my two terms have x minus 6 in common, so I can factor that out. That leaves me with 4x squared minus 9. And 4x squared minus 9 is a perfect square, so let's continue to factor that. To get 4x squared, I'm going to have to have 2x. And then 
minus and plus the square root of 9, which is minus 3 plus 3. And there's our final answer. All right, that is our extra practice for factoring. Awesome. Good job.